Hello and welcome to Voices of Bluescope, the podcast where we meet the people who work behind the scenes at Bluescope to create strength every day. I'm your host, Martin Feld. Thank you for listening. In this episode, we meet five people at the Port Kembla Steelworks in Australia, including Miranda Dutoy, Callum Burke, Rosa Tran, Michael Thompson, and Simon Took. They are all at different stages of their careers, but they all started the same way. They undertook engineering cadetships at Bluescope. With a combination of part-time study and work, cadets in chemical, electrical, materials and mechanical engineering are provided one day per week to attend university classes, balanced with their paid employment at Bluescope. Cadets are rotated through various departments on site so that they can gain exposure to different areas and projects across the business which relate to their degree. In the following conversations, you'll hear from each guest what it means to train as a cadet and where the experience has taken them. Our first interviewee is Miranda, who is in the third year of her materials engineering cadetship. She explains her motivation to join Blue Scope and what it was like to move to and pursue a career in a different country. I am a third year materials engineering cadet at Blue Scope Steel. Currently, I am a cadet at HCPD, which is Hot Mills Rotation. Perfect. What does it mean to be a cadet here at Blue Scope? What does the role involve? So, it involves working at a certain department in Blue Scope, um, completing different um, job roles there. So, I've been in many different um, placements, including a lab role and a production role, and the requirements for each of those roles are quite different. But it really just involves 30 hours of work at Blue Scope and then um, part time study uni. What motivated you to join as a cadet? I really enjoyed that. Blue Scope offered such a wide variety of experiences in the degree of my choosing. I really appreciated that I could still go to uni and also get work experience while doing uni. And Blue Scope is such a big company with multiple international sites. It was a really good experience, and the values that Blue Scope have line up with what I would like to involve myself with as well. So, what are some of those values? What What do you find fulfilling or motivating here? Bluescope has a really good sustainability policy. Um, they're moving towards being carbon neutral, which I really appreciate. And it's also got really big policies on inclusivity and equality, which I also really appreciate. Fantastic. Inclusivity or inclusion, that's a really, really big deal. Yeah. Uh, have you met a lot of different kinds of person or different people around the place here? So I myself am South African. Mm-hmm. I've moved here quite a few years ago now, but that's been a really good experience here as someone moving in from a different country. In my current department, it's almost a 50-50 split, male and female, which is really nice. And I've met so many people from different ex- um, backgrounds, including I've met Americans, I've met New Zealanders, Australians, um, and a whole bunch of different countries as well. Wonderful. And in your daily work, are there particular tasks that you find the most interesting or that you love the most day to day? I really enjoy going out in the line and participating. I involve myself with some maintenance work as well, so pulling scrap bins out of the line and things like that I really enjoy. And to anyone who's thinking about joining Blue Scope as a cadet or indeed any other kind of role, mm-hmm. is there something that you would say to them or what you like best about being here? Being a cadet at Blue Scope is a really good opportunity. Everyone here has been really nice. I've never had any issues with anyone. It's really big company. I've had so many different experiences and so many really good experiences working for Blue Scope. I would really recommend it to anyone. Next up is Callum, a first year mechanical engineering cadet who shares his recent experience of starting at the company. I'm a first year mechanical cadet working in the hot strip mill. Mechanical cadetship, that sounds fascinating. What does mechanical mean when you're describing a cadetship? Working on solving various problems. So you're you're interacting very physically with machinery. Does that involve maintenance? What sort of tasks are you doing day to day to keep the place running? Uh, Involved in uh, designing, coming up with maintenance strategies to look after what's out there currently. And when when you were in high school looking forward to university and what you were going to study or do for a job, what was it that leapt out to you about mechanical engineering? What did it mean to you then? 
It was more of a sort of, I guess, hands-on experience, getting involved in the process of, especially here with how steel is made. I've just always had an interest in mechanical things. And when you first started here, can you describe that first day? What was your impression of the place and fitting into it? My first time on site, I actually did some work experience over at the BOS and I remember walking into the BOS and seeing the massive, massive pots of steel and just, it was like a movie scene. It was just massive. Was the scale kind of daunting or exciting? Oh, How did you describe the feeling? Daunting, exciting. It was just, I guess, something you've never seen before sort of thing. It was just really big. In terms of where you're situated right now, what are some of the tasks that you undertake day to day or the things that you like the most about where you're stationed? Uh, so at the moment, uh, communicating with some coordinators in maintenance areas and just trying to solve any problems related to areas of the plant. And looking ahead, are there things that you're particularly interested in learning or gaining exposure to along the way during your rotation? For me, I'm probably uh, looking forward to learning more about design and how to improve designs. Just any way to better my problem solving skills. Problem solving skills, that's a really interesting point that I think comes out of STEM or science, technology, engineering and mathematics. What do you think are the benefits of studying STEM subjects? What do people get out of it in terms of enhancing their skills? It's useful for understanding how the world around you works and then using your maths and technology and such to analyse the things that are happening around and then using your engineering skills to then solve problems using what you know and what you've analysed. Perfect. And given that you're relatively early uh, in your cadetship, what would you say to people who are thinking, or students who are thinking of joining as a cadet now that you've been through this application process and this start very recently? Um, yeah, so I'd say if anyone's really keen, uh, especially for me, I was heaps keen to get out and work on site. Yeah, just get in and apply. <laughs> Rosa is a graduate of the cadetship program and outlines her current role, the opportunities that she has had since graduating, and what is particularly useful about chemical engineering in steelmaking. So I'm a process engineer for the hot mills, um, and I went through the system as a chemical engineering cadet. So I've actually graduated two years, two and a half years now, um, and my current role involves supporting the furnaces and water systems for both the plate mill and the hot strip mill as well. Perfect. Well, congratulations. It sounds like you're blitzing it. Thank you, Kaiser. That's great. Now, that word chemical is very interesting because I think a lot of people who hear terms like steel or engineering or steelworks, they just imagine lots of hard material just flowing through the place and maybe some sparks. Why is chemistry important? Uh, for us, chemical engineering, the whole thing is this huge process and chemical engineering is very much involved with big processes, big scale um, production. So for us, when we're producing steel, it's really important to consider material flow, um, energy flow, and that's all things that chemical engineering can help with. Because chemistry really is important to making steel. It uh, is. What can you say about some of the things that you learnt along the way when you were doing your university study? How did theory go hand in hand with the practical work? Um, throughout university, they teach you the absolute fundamentals. So for chemical engineering, it's a lot to do with material balance and energy balance. So for myself, um, looking after a furnace, um, there's a lot that goes in in terms of balancing the energy um, that's going in. So we've got fuel systems and also taking into consideration things like cooling. So you need to have that energy going out. So it's all about um, efficiency and optimising um, the process. Casting your mind back to when you were doing the cadetship, when you're in the thick of it, what did you find the most rewarding or challenging about the cadetship? Okay, for me, I think the most rewarding thing was actually being able to put theory into practice. So there's lots of things that you're learning on paper and being able to come into work and actually see it in action is really rewarding and it also really helps to cement um, your understanding of it as well. And in terms of challenges, I'd have to say probably um, time management for me. So with the cadetship, you are studying whilst you're working, but if you find that balance, it's so rewarding. Um, you're able to put things that you're learning straight into practice, really cement your understanding. That's a, an interesting point that maybe not everyone would think about. 
is it fair to say that you were actually learning life skills in terms of balance between those two spheres? Absolutely. So as a cadet, you're learning to balance um, your uni uh, university load as well as workload, your social um, interactions as well. So it really helps to develop all those skills, communication skills, um, also dealing with time management, stress, um, it's really good having that support network around you as well. So you've got people around you with so much experience. So if I'm having trouble with university things, I know who to go to and I can ask them, hey, um, can you give me a hand here? And they're just so happy to help. In terms of what you learnt alongside all these people uh, in your engineering degree here at Blue Scope as well with the hands-on work, as you said, is there something that leaps out to you as the main reason why someone would undertake subjects or study or training in science, technology, engineering and mathematics? What's the benefit? Um, I think with undertaking study and actually in having a fundamental understanding of all these principles is that when you apply them um, to problems at work, you can kind of understand what's going on behind the scenes. So for us, for process engineering, it's a lot to do with fluid movement, um, material movement, but a lot of the time it's in pipes, it's underground, it's, it's behind um, huge furnaces, so you can't really see what's going on. But having that fundamental background or that engineering background, you can go back and actually um, theorise on what's happening and that really helps to solve your everyday problems. That's a great answer. So really studying STEM or coming to somewhere like the Steelworks really gives you the behind the scenes view about how everything works. Is that Definitely, fair? Definitely, yeah. Perfect. Following the cadetship, what are those opportunities that have leapt out for you? So for me, having just graduated uh, two years ago, Blue Scope has offered me and the cadetship has offered me so many opportunities. So for me to be responsible in supporting huge furnaces and all the water processes that are involved with that as well, um, I never would have imagined that coming um, from high school. I had no idea what the scale would be like, but I'm just really grateful to, uh, to have those opportunities um, and to be able to really push myself, challenge myself and um, have an opportunity to apply all my learnings from university. Michael is another recent graduate who is now an operations engineer. He describes the process that he supports in his role and how the cadetship program kick-started his career. I'm an operations engineer for our furnace and water systems area here at the Hot Strip Mill and I studied as a materials engineer uh, for seven years and just graduated uh, six months ago. Congratulations, thank, thank you. you for speaking with us. It must have been very satisfying to finish that extensive training. Absolutely, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a long time but very worthwhile in the end, very, yeah, very fruitful I would say. Um, and satisfying to finally finish off the end of it and get a full-time job which is really securing at the end of it all. It gives me a lot of experience across the Blue Scope work site which has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Now give us a bit more information for the uninitiated. Can you tell us about what your actual discipline was and what you were learning on the job and in your university studies? Yeah, so I had, uh, I had seven years part-time uni, so I was working full-time for all seven years. So every year I moved departments. So materials engineering is um, essentially one of the, I'd say, more fundamental uh, faculties of engineering. It includes, obviously, the materials of what you're using and how they function and how best to utilise them in whatever field you're in. So I think there's a lot of diverse opportunities for a materials engineer. I know a lot of materials engineers who go across to uh, processing engineer, engineering and operations and uh, production lines and yeah, it gives you a very wide range of uh, career opportunities. But um, yeah, I've in Blue Scope it's given me the opportunity to work at our weathering labs, our central laboratories, our metal coating lines, HCPD, so our coil distribution system, our hot strip mill, uh, roll shop which is a services uh, department for our hot strip mill. I think that's all of them. There's, there's a lot to keep track of, yeah. Is there one particular area that stood out to you or that you found the most engaging? Ooh, that's very difficult. I'd, I'd say as a true materials engineer, I'd say uh, our services inspection uh, team over at SIS that runs now out of Central Labs. Uh, so you do a lot of materials investigations and it's part of a much bigger team. So you do a lot of condition monitoring, uh, non-destructive testing, structural testing and uh, height safety analysis and yeah very diverse. Um, I think one of my managers would be upset that I didn't say the hot strip mill as it's where I'm currently working uh, but I'm really enjoying my new role. Uh, it's really given me a 
place to grow my professional development quite a lot, uh, throwing you in the deep end, but um, yeah, that's where we all learn. Looking at that transition from being a cadet for those years and now moving into this role that you're doing now, mm. is there something that you learnt along the way that has been the most valuable or rewarding that's given you the capability to do what you do now? I'd say uh, networking has been a, a massive tool that I've used across the board pretty much every year since I've got here. Um, knowing what other departments do and uh, how they work and how they function effectively has been very extremely useful uh, to my job now. So just knowing that we have departments out there that service a lot of other departments means that you can get the tools that you need at your fingertips quickly and effectively. Um, yeah, communication and just if you like to meet people, it's a great place for that too. So, Can you tell us some more about what you're actually looking after now in your current role? Yeah, so uh, six months ago I started uh, a role called Operations Engineer for our furnaces, uh, walking beam furnaces and water systems at the hot strip mill. So I'm kind of the um, intermediary support for our um, walking beam furnaces. So the slab comes from the slab yard, our furnace is heated up and we roll it out of the hot strip mill. So I'm a <coughs> good intermediary between the, um, the maintenance team the asset managers and the operations, so the guys who run it day to day. So it's a lot of operator training, managing your procedures, uh, making things every, everything's running smoothly, we're getting good tons and we're just running effectively. So there's a lot of uh, opportunity for innovation across the board because uh, one, one of our furnaces is from the 1950s and it's old but it, it runs really well and it's because we can adapt and, and change to how the current, the current uh, climate is. Um, but yeah, it's, it gives us a lot of space and opportunity to make things a bit better and get them working properly and using new technologies to figure out what's, what's really going on and start, start producing really well. Sounds very exciting. And it sounds, the, it sounds like the furnace isn't old, it's a classic. It's classic, absolutely. Can't beat it. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. That's great. And people listening to you now, I'm sure they think, wow, you know, He's achieved it, he's finished it, that's great. You have that kind of benefit of hindsight or it's all done. For yeah. people who are on that start to the whole adventure or trying to apply or feeling a bit uncertain, yeah. what would you say to them about careers in STEM? No choice is a bad one, I'd say. As long as you, once you're in, both feet in and you start swimming in that, those areas, you're always going to have an experience or an opportunity that leads you to another one. Um, and you're going to always have very valuable lessons out of each each stage so I'd say if you're if you're considering it it's it's definitely worthwhile jumping into and taking up any opportunity you can get your hands on absolutely last it's time to hear from Simon who is the manager hot mills and manufacturing at Port Kembla he shares his personal career experience since graduating as a cadet more than 25 years ago and why roles in STEM are so beneficial to young people casting your mind back you were once a cadet here at the Port Kembla Steelworks at Blue Scope. What was that like? Tell us about that journey. That's true, Martin. That's, we're talking 27 years ago now, so it's been a long time since I was a cadet, but I think that speaks to how successful the cadetship was for me. It actually gave me a career. So if you ask me what it meant to me, that's what it means to me. It's given me a career, uh, which has sustained a life um, for me and my family. So a massive head start. In life, I, I am a little more mature now and understand how big a head start that was. I didn't actually understand why my dad was so pumped up when I got a cadetship in high school, um, but he clearly understood that it was a fantastic opportunity to get ahead. I got a degree, I got supported through university, uh, I had five years experience the day I graduated from university and I, and I walked into a shift work job um, the next day uh, and did that for a number of years which again set me up to, to have a strong career. Luckily for me I've been able to go from sample boy on day one to manager of a plant that makes three million tonnes now um, 27 years later. That's quite the adventure, or quite the path. Yeah, so <laughs> when you started, you said that you didn't have quite that appreciation, or you weren't quite so sure why your dad was so excited. What was your impression when you joined the place? Things have obviously changed over the years since, but what was it like to start and engage with different subjects here? It, it was funny that I, I didn't really know what I was in for the day I started. Um, I'd, 
I'd chosen to do materials engineering and I actually had to look up what that was. I, I was very interested in chemistry, physics and mathematics. I was a real STEM kid um, back in high school. Uh, I applied for a chemical engineering uh, cadetship and got a materials engineering cadetship. Uh, didn't really note that I was uh, very much suited to that, uh, but whoever figured that out, that they actually got it right because it's, it's obviously kept me going for the next 25 plus years. You were materials engineering material. Clearly I was, <laughs> apparently. Someone saw it. <laughs> very good. And over time, what were some of the, the most notable challenges or, or memories that you've taken away from it that have informed who you are or what you do now? Sure. So you've got to get through university to start with, so five years of um, part-time study uh, and almost full-time work. Uh, I did get a couple of years of full-time university, so I actually got the balance of both, where I had the, the university life for a couple of years and the part-time study, full-time work period. I actually got a full-time job on shift uh, in my last six months of university, so I was, I was completing a, an honours uh, thesis uh, and working shift work in my last six months. That was certainly a challenge. And I think that was sort of when I was starting to mature and figuring out why my dad was uh, so understanding of why it was so important. And, and I needed to make sure that I got through that, uh, which I did in the end. Uh, but then, you know, working shift work, what a wonderful grounding experience that can be. Um, I clearly learned that shift workers deserve their money. Uh, a Saturday night shift is not something to be sneezed at and you should certainly get a few more bucks for doing it. Definitely that, that helps you become grounded and, and the experience of that couple of years actually let me, um, I crawled every role of a paint line and learned exactly how a process worked and that was in the middle of the night and we had to get it going again uh, and again that was such a good grounding to, to understand how a process worked to ultimately allow you to maybe manage one of those processes one day. That's a great message in all of that, just applying yourself, throwing yourself into the deep end and uh, Saturday night shift, that sounds pretty brutal but you've come out of it. Got there in the end. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Although I'm curious, what was your honours thesis about? The nitriding of stainless steels and the effect that cold rolling had on them, their grain structure. Is that the title verbatim? Pretty close, I reckon. <laughs> Very good. That's impressive in itself. Probably haven't read that one for a few years we'll later. i circulate that one. I'm not sure I'll understand it, but <laughs> that's fantastic. So these days, can you explain what your role entails, all of the responsibility that you take on with all of that experience behind you? Sure, so now I'm the manager of the hop mill. So that's a, a pretty sizable plant. Uh, uh, we pull all 3 million, 3.2 million tonnes of slab uh, that we make. Uh, we pull that through my mills. So I've got a strip, hot strip mill and a plate mill uh, and subsequent processing of both of them. Uh, I see my job as overseeing and ensuring that we deliver a saleable product at the end of my process that's been produced uh, safely, to a quality standard, to the customer's expectation uh, in the most productive way possible. In this managerial role that you are now, obviously you're seeing a lot of newcomers all the time, some cadets, some not. Focusing on cadets with that you know, close connection to your own experience, what's it like to see new people coming in and taking those first steps in what is a very large environment, a very you know, big industrial place? Oh, I get all proud now. I, I can see a young person who's got an opportunity that I was afforded all those years ago, uh, and I try my best to see if I can't find a path for them or help them in any way I can to potentially have as a successful a time as I've had uh, since my cadetship. And for people who are thinking about doing it or might have certain doubts, you know, is it for me, could I take this on, what would be that key piece of advice that you give to them? Have a crack. I reckon. It's, it's, it's been so wonderful for me. It set me up for a wonderful you know, circumstance in my life. That head start that I got, uh, if you can get supported through a university degree uh, and accrue real life working experience at the same time, you are going to be streets ahead of the competition uh, when you graduate. And that brings this cadetship episode to a close. Thank you very much to Miranda, Callum, Rosa, Michael and Simon for sharing their stories with us. If you'd like to learn more about engineering cadetships and other job opportunities with us at Bluescope, make sure to visit bluescope.com careers. You can also view the show notes for this episode in your podcast app to find links to further content, such as TV Bluescope videos on YouTube, which show some of the facilities and processes that were mentioned, along with even more cadetship stories. 
For other news and updates, visit Bluescope on LinkedIn and follow at Bluescope on Twitter. Thank you for listening to the Voices of Bluescope podcast. We look forward to having you again soon.